China's built a brand new airliner, but what's it like to fly on? Is it as good as the Airbus A320 it bears an uncanny resemblance to? And what exactly does rabbit milk taste like? Well, I'm about to find out as I travel to Shanghai to take a flight on the Comac C919. Hey, good morning. Good morning from Shanghai in China. I'm off to the small airport in, in Shanghai today, Hong Chao Airport, because I've got a very special plane to ride on. Right, welcome to Hong Chao Airport. This is Shanghai's second airport. Pudong's the main one. This is Hong Chao. It's on the other side of town. It's where a lot of the domestic flights go from. My first stop today was to head to check-in and it soon became apparent that I might not be going anywhere today. There was no sign anywhere of the airline that I was flying on and even when I asked the members of staff they were just as confused as I was. China Eastern to Chengdu. Chengdu. Ah, okay. We headed for the airport information desk to see if they could help us. Okay. A different terminal or? Okay, down the elevator, I said gate three and two. Oh wow, okay. Okay, okay. So okay. different different airports? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Can I uh first floor. Right, so this is incredibly confusing. Apparently there's two terminals here um, and the driver's dropped me for the wrong one. So um, <sighs> I've got to try and get to <laughs> the other terminal which apparently involves taking a train um, well, goodness me flight goes in like an hour and a half I've got a massive amount of time so um, might not, might not even, this might be a very short video we might not even be making it on this flight but let's see as it turned out getting to the other terminal wasn't exactly a simple affair I had to buy a ticket and ride the Shanghai Metro to the opposite side of the airport just to get to the other terminal uh, thank you it only cost three Chinese yuan, or about 50 US cents, to get across there, but it was still a bit of a pain in the backside that I could have done without at this time of the morning. Still, the metro got me to the other terminal eventually, and I headed through to try and check in. Alright, finally at the right terminal, I think. Now we've got to find the right check-in desk. It was now less than an hour before the flight was due to depart and I was worried that my chances of getting a window seat were slipping away by the second. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, how are you? Is it possible for window seat? There's no window. Are you okay? Thank you. Window. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. I managed to check in. I got the last window seat on the plane. This was stressing me out big time because you can't choose your seats on um, China Eastern. We, you can, but the website's a bit crap and it won't. It sort of just bombs out on you every time you try to choose your seat. Um, but hey, we've got a window seat, 33A, on the Comac C919. <laughs> Hello. Yep, thank you. Security at Shanghai was relatively straightforward and I went through security and then promptly straight back to security when I realised I'd forgotten my bag. Thank you so much, I'm very sorry. Thank you. Right through security, finally got my bag. You're probably wondering how on earth I managed to forget my massive bag like that. I am beyond exhausted. I've been travelling at this point for about a week, functioning on about four hours sleep a night for the last seven days hot-footing it around the world filming some other videos which will be coming soon on the channel um, but um, I felt that this one needed to sort of come out first really because it's quite um, it's, it's quite a cool one isn't it really um, so I'm gonna head down to the gate not even not even going to the lounge today I'm not excited about the plane I just want to go see the plane as it turned out though seeing the plane would have to wait as it turned out we were going from a bus gate today 
Right, down at the gate then, gate 53, we've made it in time. Um, we're boarding in about another sort of half an hour or so. It's a bus gate though. Hmm. Well, I suppose that's good because it means we get a good view of the plane when we get off the bus, but um, we don't get to see it. And fortunately, the surprise of the C919919 Comac, um, that, that, we can't see it until we get off the bus, basically. But that, that will be a nice element of suspense, won't it? And we'll get to see it a little bit later on and hope that it is actually the C919 Comac, by the way. I've never <laughs> substituted it for an A320. That could be a bit annoying, won't it? But um, we'll see. Thankfully, I didn't have too long to wait and they called for boarding for our flight. Thank you. So I rode on the bus across the airport to the waiting aircraft and to my delight I was met by the wonderful Comac C919 sitting in the Shanghai sun waiting for us to get on board. It seemed that the flight was absolutely full of Chinese aviation geeks, which was amazing because everyone was just standing around taking pictures before they got on board. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. No, English, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can say ni hao. <laughs> so the C919 seats 190 passengers in total. It has two rows of business class at the front in a 2-2 configuration and the rest of the planes in a pretty standard 3-3 configuration, just like you'd find on the Airbus A320. Economy class starts at row number 31, which is pretty interesting because I was in 33 and thought I was down the back. Well, welcome on board the world's first Comac C919. It's um, a Chinese built aircraft. It's been in service now for two days. Um, it literally started yesterday uh, flying the scheduled route to Chengdu. Um, and um, I thought while I was here, I might as well get a ride on board one. And um, yeah, there's the view out of the window. Um, it's operated by China Eastern or China Eastern, as I like to call them. Call you on the telephone. And um, it's quite nice. It's very modern and sleek on board. Um, this is what the seats look like. Got quite a lot of leg room. I mean, I'm six foot four, and that's sort of what we're working with. It's not too bad. It's like a three-hour flight. It's quite nice. Um, tray tables here. There's like um, stuff here, like literature and stuff like that. The world's first C919. All the overheads. Look at those things there. They're very cool. Um, LED lighting on the um, old um, gas vents up there. Very, very nice. Um, it's a very nice plane. It smells like a new plane. It's um, that new plane smell. Very, very good. Um, we're flying today about three hours across to Chengdu um, in central China today on this plane. Um, and it is absolutely rammed full, by the way, of um, Chinese avgeeks or chavgeeks as I'll um, probably start referring them to. Um, um, everyone's got cameras out. It's a massive event. Everyone's excited to be on board. It's just super, super cool. Pretty soon the air stairs were rolled back and we were getting on our way for our flight across China. I did find it pretty cool that even these sick bags were branded with the world's first C919 logo on them. The C919 is powered by the Leap engine which is pretty much the same engine that you find on the Airbus A320neo. As we sat waiting to taxi, it was pretty interesting to see the pilots of the other planes taking photos of the C919 as they waited for takeoff. The safety video we were shown was pretty interesting and somehow oddly patriotic at the same time. It was a little bit weird. With that all out of the way, it was time to line up on the runway and get on our way for our flight across to Chengdu. Despite the fact that this plane was completely full, it climbed like a rocket out of Shanghai.
Our route today then took us west out of Shanghai, flying a good social distance overhead Wuhan before continuing west into Chengdu. Flight time today was 2 hours and 45 minutes, cruising at 30,000 feet. Our airborne from Shanghai on board the Sheena Eastern Comac C919. What a takeoff that was. Great views of Shanghai as we took off there. Um, this aircraft really does feel like if you ordered an Airbus A320 off of Wish.com, um, it's kind of it's kind of very similar to an A320, but in the same way, very different. The Comac, the company that make this, are a Chinese government-owned sort of aircraft manufacturer. They also make the ARJ21, which looks like if you ordered an MD80 off of Wish.com. Well, this one is their sort of next one up, and it's the first um, sort of. I say the first, their first narrow body. It's the first one that's not a regional jet. It's like a um, A320 size plane. The main selling point of this plane is that it's all Chinese and that um, it's all made in China because they want to start getting away from having planes built by Airbus and Boeing. Um, but it's not all. Chinese, it's only actually half Chinese made. Um, most of the parts are imported from overseas. The engines that you see out of the window, that's a Leap engine made by CFM, French-American conglomerate. Um, the avionics on the flight deck, they're all imported from um, Western countries as well. Um, most of the things on this plane are, it's only about half Chinese. It's not as much as they're saying it's a made in China plane, as much as its final assembly is done in China, most of the plane actually is built overseas. Um, and it's just kind of put together here in China, really. And um, they're hoping to um, be able to sell this plane around the world. Unfortunately, it's not going too well because a lot of countries have already banned it. It's only been flying two days and it's banned um, outside of China in a lot of countries. Um, um, America's already banned them from importing it because of the relationship between the um, the company that obviously own this and the Chinese government. The um, I think the EU have um, banned it from going into the EU as well. So it, it's not their, their international efforts aren't going well so far. Let's just put it that way. But it's quite a nice plane. It's quite comfortable to ride on. It is like um, I'd say it's like an A321 Neo or an A320 Neo rather riding on board. It's quite comfortable. Um, it's in very good condition as you'd expect for a plane that's two days old. Everything's very brand new, smells like new. Um, I don't know how long quiet that's going to last. I'd be interested to see it in um, interested to see it in like a few months or something or a few years and see how it's holding up. Um, but um, for now, yeah, we're climbing up now, heading across to the city of Chengdu in central China. Um, and getting some views of the hazy skies of China out the window. Okay, then it would appear that the seats recline on this plane because the guy in front of me has just reclined his seat, but it's um, it, it's a bit snug now. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot of room now. I would say I'd like to recline my seat, but I don't really want to do the same to the person behind me, so, um, yeah. Oh well. But we can see the recline of the seats there, and um, how far back they go. It's time for the Noel Phillips Blue Review. Welcome on board <laughs> the world's very first Comac C919 Lou Review. There's two Lou's at the back and there's two at the front. This is one of the back ones. It's very small, very cramped. We've got the flashy light going on, so they're obviously using the same frequency that they use on um, Airbus planes. We've got some air freshener there. There's a, the toilet's just there and kind of, con is it contactless? horrible. Um, it's a power button for the um, for the water there. Um, and then we've got an event there as well. Um, and apparently they can set the temperature of the water as well. Um, I saw it reported somewhere they can actually centrally control the temperature of the water, um, which apparently is a big thing. Um, but that, yeah, anyway, um, so this is the loo, um, the, one of the loos anyway. Um, so far, it's getting a bit bumpy. Um, so far, enjoying the flight on the C919. A um, couple of hours left. It's like a party atmosphere on board. Everybody's taking pictures, everybody's videoing. There's vloggers, there's um, 
all sorts here so it's, it's, it's a really cool flight and I'm really enjoying being a, um, a part of this um, sort of first week of flights effectively on the C919 it's pretty cool that was the Noel Phillips Lou Review Fairly soon the cabin crew started coming around giving out their meal service for today's flight. Right, so we get a meal service breakfast on this flight, um, which is quite cool. It's a three hour flight, but the thing is, in this part of the world, every flight, even like the like short domestic hops, they all have a meal service on board of some sort, which is always nice. Um, that's something that they do quite well over here. Um, but um, here's what we've gone for. Well, I'll say what we've gone for. This is what I've been given anyway. Um, so we've got something there, um, some fruit, some sanitary wipes. Ooh, that's cool. Like a little cake with a C919 logo on it. And some um, some rabbit milk. I didn't realise that um, that rabbits had milk. Can you get milk from rabbits? How do you milk a rabbit? You'd be very tiny hands, wouldn't you? Um, anyway, that's that. And then um, obviously the main the main course is this. Um, which we'll open and have a look. Ooh. So some noodles for breakfast. Always good. Very nice noodles. All right, I'm gonna have a go at tasting this rabbit milk. It doesn't taste much different to normal milk. Maybe a little bit sweeter. Mm. Okay, well there we go. Rabbit milk. We'll fly on um, Sheena Eastern Airlines and you can um, drink some rabbit milk. I had a look at the air quality on board this C919 using my cool Atmotube device. It registered an air quality of 87% which was pretty good and the humidity was an amazing 54%. Even the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, which advertises a higher humidity air than any other plane, only has a humidity of 10 to 15%. I'll pop a link to the Atmo tube in the description. It's a really handy device to carry around with you, and if you use my link, you get 20% off if you decide to pick one up. All right, then we have started our descent down into Chengdu Tianfu Airport. Um, this flight seems to have flown by in no time at all. I've really enjoyed this little ride on the um, Comac plane. It's, it's a very nice plane to ride on, honestly. Um, it, it, it is quite comfy. Always nice to ride on a brand new plane as well. Um, so, um, yeah, let alone one that's quite as rare and potentially going to stay as rare as the Comac C919. I don't see them um, getting a bunch of them flying around the skies with Southwest Airlines or anything like that anytime soon, but um, who knows? Um, but um, it's, it's certainly nice to ride on a rare plane like this. Um, Especially when it so happens to be a brand new rare plane as well. It's um, a bit of a rarity to get on a, a rare plane that's um, actually in quite modern, new condition and indecently, really. And that's the thing. You see, usually when you fly on a rare plane, it means you're flying on a plane that's over 40 years old and probably falling to pieces. But with planes like the C919, you get the chance to ride on a rare plane that's still brand new and fresh out the factory in the knowledge that it will more than likely remain a rare plane into the future. For me, I'd call that a win-win situation. It wasn't long before we were touching down right on time into Chengdu's Tianfu International Airport.
My flight across to Chengdu today cost me 185 US dollars or about 148 British pounds, working out to a cost per mile of about 13 cents. Overall I thought this was a bargain to get a ride on the world's newest airliner, but would you take a C919 over an Airbus A320 or a 737? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you. Bye-bye. There we are then, survive the Made in China plane here at Chengdu Tianfu Airport, much like the Comac C919. This airport is brand new, it's only been open for two years. They've got plans to make this the third busiest airport in the country after Beijing and Shanghai. It's quite nice, very modern, very swish. Well, I quite enjoyed my ride on the Comac C919. That was quite cool, wasn't it? Um, it be interesting to see how that plane goes and whether or not it remains just as rare as it is right now, um, or whether or not they actually start selling some of them and um, you see more of them flying around. I don't know. Time will only tell, and maybe in a few years' time we'll look back at this video and wonder what all the fuss was about, or maybe we'll look back at this video and think, what's a Comac C919 again? Now I've got to hot foot it out of China now because I'm only in China on a 24-hour transit visa, um, which means if I don't get out of China in the next sort of couple of hours, I'm sort of going to be in a lot of trouble with the Chinese authorities. That's something I do not want to do. Um, so I've got to get on my next flight. But, um, Make sure you hit subscribe so you can see all the videos that have sort of led up to this one, all the flights I've taken to get to China and also all the flights I'm going to take to get back out of China as well um, by hitting that subscribe button. Uh, I'd much appreciate it. And in the meantime, let me know down in the comments what you think to the Comac C919. Would you fly on the plane that's made in China? Or would you leave it a bit maybe and see if it's actually, see how it goes sort of thing. Um, let me know down in the comments. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.